Try it. Welcome back to your Wednesday edition of Off Beep. Thanks for staying with us this afternoon. Emily's just eating her burger, but time now for our next guest. And before becoming an entertainer, Lawrence Mooney worked as a customs officer, furniture polisher, perfume salesman, window cleaner, and then fell in love with comedy, which is just fantastic. And of course, he has stood all over Australia and the world. Mm, you've seen him on Problems, The Agony Of, uh, Dirty Laundry Live, and even more with his Malcolm Turnbull impression. Take a look now. Just do your Malcolm, in term Malcolm Turnbull impersonation and piss off. And I would, I would do it for you. I'd, I'd certainly do it for you because I enjoy saying words and, and pronouncing all the letters in all of the words. Like February. And no, I do. I quite enjoy speaking and I enjoy listening to my own voice because sometimes I just stop talking and just stare into the middle distance and suck the moisture out of my smug mouth. Love that, don't you, Emily? Mm, and, good stuff, great stuff. And having stuff. said that, please make welcome to Offbeat for the first time, the very funny and clever Lawrence Mooney. Thank you very much, Jake. Yeah, Thank thanks you, very Emily. much for joining us it's today. Very, it's very uh, contagious speaking like Malcolm Turnbull. <laughs> it feels quite nice in the mouth, Jake. Uh, and so, uh, uh, yes, you've got to be careful not to round your vowels too much. <laughs> That's nice to be here. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Now, I do like that clip because uh, prior to it, you talk about how if uh, Tony Abbott isn't pre Prime Minister yeah. anymore, you can't do his impressions. And, and it was like a week later that yeah. Malcolm Turnbull was voted in. Oh, yeah. so I am the kiss of death. It's the worst nightmare that became true. Well, I, was, I started to do Malcolm Turnbull in uh, 2014, and then at the beginning of 2015, uh, there was the mooted spill about February the 9th, and I thought, well, hold on, I've got this routine set up here, and I've got a lot of jokes at Tony's expense, coming into the 2015 Comedy Festival, which was a show called uh, Surely Not. And so I wanted Tony to hold on, because he was great comic value, Tony. Let's not forget that he knighted the Duke of Edinburgh, mm. which is a, a great thing to do, because it's a diminutive, making a prince a sir, Sir yeah. Prince Philip. Mm. I, no. I, I remember that joke you did. It's yeah. very funny. Mm. Have, you had any, have you heard from either of them about your impressions? Well, I, uh, I actually did Malcolm Turnbull in front of Malcolm Turnbull at the North Melbourne Grand Final Breakfast last year. And going in, I, I know Bill Shorten, and he said to me, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm gonna be doing Malcolm Turnbull. And Bill said, he's gonna fucking hate it. <laughs> Cause he's got no sense of humor. And so I was on the television doing Malcolm and just behind me over my shoulder was Malcolm just kind of like looking a little bit sullen and then something inside his head must have said you better smile at this otherwise you're going to look like a bit of a, a straighty 180 and he's like yeah. <laughs> and, and then bill sean when i said all right mate you're joining us on the campaign team well actually i was approached by labor a couple of times to do some fundraisers and uh to do malcolm turnbull but i couldn't make the dates work so i would have happily you know helped the labor cause along mm. but i was yeah. a little bit you know divided at the election because Malcolm has meant a little bit of a living for me through the Triple M network. So I was like, I don't want him to lose, <laughs> but I don't want him to do well. So it was kind of a perfect result. A one seat majority is perfect for my impersonations because you know it's gonna just give me a mm. lot of grist for the mill. Yeah. So is that your favorite impersonation, impersonation to do? Do you have any other specialties? Well, it's pretty much the only one that I've taken on the road. I've always mucked around with impersonations and I really do enjoy impersonators, someone who really nails it. It's mm. quite fun. Mm. The other one that I probably have done a lot more as a party trick and to impress friends rather than on stage, and I have done him on stage a couple of times, is Shane Bourne, mm -hmm. who is a very, very dear friend of mine. I, I hope he still is. Um, <laughs> Shane, if you're Shane. watching. <laughs> you are fantastic. You are sensational. And so, uh, He's another guy with, and I guess what you need to impersonate somebody is somebody who has a very identifiable, mm. iconic kind of a voice. So it means that they are unique. And just earlier, we mentioned in the intro, you know, you've been a window cleaner, a perfume salesman, mm. a customs officer. I'm an itinerant, Jake. <laughs> I'm an itinerant, I'm a drifter. You're a jack of all I, trades. I'm a man on the outskirts of town. I'm not a jack of all trades, I'm a man 
who hasn't got a trade. So <laughs> I fell into comedy, and like Richard Gere said in An Officer and a Gentleman, I've got nowhere else to go. Do well, you have a favourite job? What would you be doing if you weren't a comedian? That's a pretty good question, actually. If I wasn't a comedian, I reckon I might be a really dodgy individual because <laughs> it's like I probably would do anything for cash if I'm not already considered by some to be a dodgy individual. Well, um, yourself, that I, sounds very dodgy. I really wanted to be a, a motor mechanic very early on in life, and my parents, being migrant parents, wanted something better for their son. Not that there's anything wrong with being a motor mechanic. They came to me and they said, Lawrence, we know you're obsessed with being a motor mechanic and you're obsessed with cars, but that's not happening. And so they killed that dream. So then I kind of like saw showbiz and that's where I wanted to be. Mm, it's the job of most supportive parents. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to uh, roll through a break now, but uh, when we come back, we've got a bit of a game for you to play. Yay! So it's good you're good at impressions because that involves a bit of that. More no of spoilers. Lawrence Mooney right here on Offbeat.